for more than half a century, the Chevy Corvette has been a staple of American engineering and capabilities. For seven generations, the Corvette has been a front-engine sports car. But the eighth-generation Corvette, named the C8, is here to play with the big boys. They have moved the engine to the back and gave it a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated American V8, making 495 horsepower and 623 newton meters of torque, sending the C8 from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds. And all of that for the bargain price of around $60,000. This made the C8 Corvette compete with sport cards in numbers, but with the quarter of the price. And that's made many popular and trusted car YouTubers call it the car of the year of 2020. So let's see what makes the Corvette so special and loved amongst everyone who experienced it. It's not only this car's numbers that make it so special, in which the styling that very closely resembles the best supercars in its class. Chevy was able to make a design that's so special and unique while still making it very uh, competitive with other supercars that, are, that can be double or triple the price of the C8. You can see this in the headlights, for example, in which they're able to create a modern look that, that is carried out around through the entire car. This LED strip, for example, that acts as, a, as the running light is unique to the Corvette, but is, but is also very close to other more expensive supercars. You can see the various uh, styling and control lights found throughout the uh, front hood right here, which also create this more aggressive and angry look, as well as making this car look a lot more expensive than it actually looks. Take any angle of the car and ask someone who's not really into cars about uh, just how much they think this car is worth. And trust me, they'll definitely tell you that it's in supercar territory. And in no way is the C8's supercar-like design more apparent than the rear end styling. You can just see how aggressive and unique this, uh, this section of the car looks like, especially with those, uh, four, um, with those four dashes for the headlights. Again, uh, resembling the exhaust tips down there. So you have one for each exhaust tip. And you also have this huge rear mounted uh, uh, wing. Is that a wing? And you also, of course, you have this huge rear mounted wing, which is standard across all C8 models, which again contributes to this car's uh, aggressive and powerful look. And you also have the engine back. Yes, this is a rear mid mounted engine, which again helps it resemble supercars not only in styling as well as in uh, driving dynamics in which this helps with uh, weight distribution making the car handle better throughout corners. Now if you saw the engine cover you'd think that the black section will only lift up with the glass but what I end up found is that this entire section of bodywork actually lifts up with this rear end and that's for several reasons. First of all the, uh, the engine of course so a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 making 495 horsepower and 623 newton meters of torque. Again, huge numbers, um, very close to supercar numbers, but that's not the impressive part about the engine. What's impressive is actually uh, the zero to 60 time, zero to 60 miles per hour, which is two point, I think nine seconds, let me just check one second. Two point eight seconds and a quarter mile time of eleven point one. Again, very very close to supercars. Anything under three seconds is deep deep into supercar territory. What really surprised me back here, other than how beautiful the engine looks, is actually the storage. So th this, even though this is a uh, mid-mounted engine, you still have a, the storage back here and not in the front. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. 
Now compared to supercars, this is a very uh, large storage section for such uh, a hardcore car. I'm not sure how many liters you have, but who, cares, who really cares about that? I can confidently say it's uh, it's probably double the size that you get uh, in other uh, in, in, in other supercars. Of course, I'm not sure about that, so don't take my word for granted. But again, a very beautiful uh, rear section. I didn't expect that all of this bodywork actually lifts up. Now let's talk about the side angle of the Corvette. And the uh, main interesting feature here is the air intake actually here which also uh, forms the door handle, which I'll get to in a moment. So uh, because this is a rear mounted engine, you can you also can get a rear, uh, air intake back here. Again, another tribute to supercars, just showing how similar this car is to uh, those um, uh, more expensive supercars. Now, speaking of the door handles and getting in, uh, as you can see, there's no apparent door handle when you first walk up to the car. But if you just stick your hand over here, you can press a rubber button and the door will actually um, uh, swing open. So with that, let's move inside now. Yeah. Now, don't mind the white chair in the background. It's okay. Um, now, the biggest thing about the Corvette is just how low it is. Again, which again is very similar to su supercars. Someone can't count for me how many times I said supercars in this video. I bet it's over like 20 at this point. But uh, one last thing before I move in. This roof is actually removable, so I uh, so this D8 is actually a convertible, which I think, I'm not sure if this is a standard feature or not, all of them might be, but the, the interesting thing is that this roof can actually fit in the, into the carbon compartment I showed you in the front earlier on, which is uh, very cool. So it's, it's not automatic, but it's, it's manual, it's a hard manual hard top, but you can fit it in, in there. And with that, let's now, let's now, let's now, <laughs> with that, let's now move into the car. Finally, let's move inside. Now again, it's a very low car, so it's not easy to go inside, but once you're in, it's not easy to go out either. So you should really be committed whenever you go inside. Now that we're inside, there's many uh, things to note. So first of all, let's address this row of buttons, so the elevator in the room. So Chevy really tries to make this uh, interior look special and to some degree they really do succeed in which it doesn't look like, like any other Chevy on the market today. One way they, they decided to do that is by sticking all the climate control buttons in one uh, straight line over here. Now that might get confusing at the beginning but I've heard from uh, many people say that you do get used to it after some time. So everything from uh, fan controls to uh, climate vents to, uh, to almost everything regarding the um, the climate controls is found in this uh, uh, strip of buttons here. What this really does is that it separates the interior into two sections. So it makes the passenger section look as if it's uh, uh, an area to the side and this is like the main cockpit of the car. It gives it a more f a driver focused environment. As you can see, for example, the infotainment and uh, all of those buttons are angled towards the driver. So now speaking about the driver, uh, one of the most important things is the steering wheel or in this case the steering square because it looks it doesn't resemble a wheel in any sense this is again to resemble race cars so that's even a step beyond supercars it's a really special steering wheel and it has many controls for the infotainment and the uh, gauge cluster screen now let's talk about this uh, gear selector again a way of uh, chevy to make this car more special and more unique to make the buyer feel like this is not any normal chevy so you have a gear selector where you pull back different levers to engage drive, reverse, or parking, and uh, or, sorry, to engage drive or reverse, and press buttons to uh, engage parking or uh, or neutral or manual mode. Next to the gear lever, you have the controller for the infotainment system. Now I won't really get into detail into the infotainment system because that's not really the purpose of this car. This is a driver-focused car uh, aimed at performance. So I don't really uh, feel like it's necessary to go into the infotainment in this uh, in this video. But you, what's interesting is that you do have a full screen gauge cluster. It's important to note that this is, this is the full option uh, C8, which means that uh, it has all the features as well as the highest quality leathers and all of that. So that's, just keep that in mind. One of those options includes those amazing uh, Bose sound system. So you have speakers dotted all across the interior, which I'm, I'm sure do sound very nice. Speaking of uh, sound, let's hear the exhaust notes of this car. Now, 
Now I showed you the door handles from the outside, uh, from the inside, uh, and it's also interesting from the inside as well. It's actually just simply a, a button to you press, and it just unlocks the car. Now this is an electronic unlock, of course. So if what if, uh, and you might ask, what if the battery? Dies? And for that, you have a mechanical uh, release down here as well, so you can do that in case the battery of the car uh, dies on you and you're inside. Now, because this is again the full option, you you do get this very nice uh, quality leather, and it, it it does really feel like a high-end supercar in that in that extent. Now, it's, it's important to mention that it's it's actually more comfortable than you might expect, given how it looks like from the outside. It, yes, it's very low to the ground, but I do have a lot of space as a passenger. Again, a lot of headroom, especially that this is a convertible, so I can just remove this and have infinite headroom. And um, you also have a lot of legroom as well, so a lot of space in relation to how uh, small it looks like from the outside. And I think Chevy does uh, succeed in making this interior very special. It doesn't feel like any other Chevy on the market. But when you start looking into some details, you might notice that uh, there are some part sharing between this and other uh, uh, less unique and less special uh, Chevy models, such as the window switches. And I'm not sure, but that might also uh, extend it to the uh, turn signal stocks as well. Now, this is not really a big deal. So that was the uh, interior of the Corvette C8, uh, uh, very quickly and briefly, a very nice place to be, and uh, again, con continues to make this car resemble a supercar in many ways. And throughout this angle, you can really see how special and different and unique this car is. For, so this is uh, a C63, again, a, a very focused sports car, but when compared to the, to the uh, Corvette, you can see the, the difference in styling. This looks a lot angrier, a lot more aggressive, and a lot lower to the ground. Again, those are all, those are all traits of supercars, and the Corvette tends uh, to have them, especially when, when you see it next to uh, a more traditional and rational uh, car. So the C8 Corvette is not messing around. And the more time I spend with it, the more I forget it's a Chevy, and just instinctively think about it as a supercar of its own. So yes, Chevy has succeeded in making a supercar that truly compares with the Italians like n never before, but still at a fraction of the price. And now I do truly understand why the Chevy C8 Corvette is indeed the car of the year for many of the car journalists. And with that, Thanks a lot for watching. And it's not only this car's numbers that matter. And, and it's not only this car's numbers that make it special. It's also its styling, which... It's also its styling, which... Rem, which <laughs> and it's not only those car's numbers on paper, that make it so special. It's also its styling, which very closely resembles the best supercars and which you can see this in the headlights, for example, which has a this modern look with I think they're waving. Ah. Sure. Ah. The it's not only this car's number that make it so special. It's not only this car's numbers that make it so special. In which... In which the styling that very closely resembles the best supercars in its class. It's not only this car's numbers that make it so special. In which... in which the style and it's not only this car's numbers that matter and and it's not only this car's numbers that make it special it's also its styling which it's also its styling which rem which <laughs> and it's not only those car's numbers on paper that make it so special it's also its styling, which very closely resembles the best 
supercars and شايف حالي على الاساس which it's not only it's not only this car's numbers that make it so special it's also